Karen, uh, thanks so much for the build-up. Uh, anybody other than you who knows me just wouldn't recognize all, all of that, really. And, uh, but it helps me because I was going to answer a question that you probably most would want to ask after that uh, panoply of quality of panellists so far, how on earth do I happen to be standing here? Well, it happened like this, and it, it's a bit of a warning about never uh, being loose in your talk around Karen Chohan. She heard me say one day that somebody recently had asked me what I wanted on my gravestone. Um, Spike Milligan had stolen the best line. Those of you who remember Spike Milligan, I think he said something like, I told them I was ill, so that one had gone. Uh, and I said something like, well, because I've never been anywhere, all these people have traveled all around the world and done everything, because I've never been anywhere. I think what I would like on mine is he tried in vain to join up a few dots. Well, of course, by the time the PR people got hold of it, it's dots, spots, and stops, so it's, it's a bit complicated. But I'm afraid it in, involves me needing to tell you a little bit of my background. So I was born um, a few hundred yards from here. You'll notice I talk yards, so you get an impression of how old I am. Um, a, a few hundred yards from here. And where's Joe Tallock? Joe, I think I was born in a maternity home that is now the John Lewis men's shoes counter. But <laughs> if you could check that out for me, I'd be really, really grateful. And so that's over there. And I lived for the first uh, 22 years of my life before I got married about one mile over there. And it was called uh, Frederick Road. It used to be uh, called a slum, but in uh, a modern home-owning democracy, it would probably be called close to all amenities now. Um, and I didn't really grow up there. I grew up on Spinney Hill Park. I don't know if anybody knows it. Any day when the temperature was above five degrees, I was on Spinney Hill Park. Um, I went to uh, Charmwood Street School where I often say I learned to fight and occasionally uh, went to, to a class, um, and then took the 11 plus, hiss and boo. Um, and there were two mores in my year. One was very clever and there was me. And you've got it, he failed the 11 plus and I passed. He's never spoken to me since. Obviously a complete and utter mistake. And not only that, but I then got to what was a very, very, very fine grammar school called Wigiston Grammar School, um, and he went off to, a, to another school. I tell the story because what's going to course through my short presentation is, is education and what I believe is the value of education. I read um, a piece fairly recently that since the demise of the grammar schools, social mobility for working class kids has not moved anywhere. I'm against grammar schools. Great if you were one of the 16% who got to one, but not so great if you were one of the 84% who didn't, who then thought that they were a failure. I struggled initially at grammar school because there were quite a lot of posh kids, um, and to me posh kids were those who lived in a semi-detached house and had a small front garden. But eventually I took it on board but had to have two goes at my O-levels, as they then were. And I mention it because I think, again, it's sort of relevant to me. Now, those of you who know anything about history, and there are a few educationalists here, might just have worked out that I was probably being conceived. It's not a very nice image, but please go with me. I was probably being conceived at about the same time that the 1944 Education Act was being debated in the House of Commons. Um, the 44 Act was about equality of opportunity, as well as free milk, by the way, but equality of opportunity, particularly for women, for girls and women. And I suspect that, because I've not been able to throw off a desire to see life be more equal to youngsters having more chances, I think there must have been something that went on in my psyche when that was happening. So a good education moved me on. Uh, again, in my street, Frederick Road, it was always said that you either went on to do pretty well or you went to prison. There was no middle course. Um, and I eventually uh, got my first degree, went into business. That was very kind to me, but became a magistrate. I won't 
bore you with the reasons why I became a magistrate and I haven't got time to tell you. But the person who promoted me to be a magistrate, I can still see him now. And you have to remember this was a time because I'm Leicestershire's longest serving magistrate. I'm in my 35th year. He was of the old era that until about 1970, you had to be probably a Freemason or somebody very serious in the political regime in the city. Quite interestingly, after about 1985, it helped if you were a trade union leader. So governments tend to swing, don't they, from one thing to the other. And I was, I was a bit sandwiched in between because I'd gone on, and courtesy of De Montfort University, Leicester Poly as it was, I, I'd gone off and, and got a law degree. And the person who promoted me to be a magistrate, I shall never forget what he said to me. He said, well, Rick, you probably won't enjoy it because you'll find and this is, again, a sign of the age, you'll find it's largely the middle classes sitting in judgment on the working classes. And I've often sort of remembered that to show how life's moved on. So, 35 years on the bench, in the context of today and what I want to touch on, probably the most telling story is me as a chairman going into a retiring room before we start business. I sit on a Friday morning and saying to me, now, sir, today you've got a man in court, and this is what he's done, and this is what may happen to him. I said, that's a strange name and a, quite a, a strange road that he lived on. He said, yes, well, you may remember, sir. He said, I was your legal advisor nine years ago when you were in the chair, and his father was in court for almost exactly the same thing. Well, that's amazing, I said. He said, oh, well, you're not going to get away with that story. He said, sir, because the day I arrived here, I sat with you, and you were the chairman in the court and you sent his grandfather to prison for exactly the same thing. So I hold the badge of honor of having sent three generations of a family to prison for the same thing. Um, I don't enjoy that badge of honor. But onward through um, the criminal justice system into health, Karen's already said that I chair Health Watch Leicester, she, she chairs Health Watch Leicester. And again, permeating through my life is the unfairness and unevenness of how people are treated, almost dependent upon, perhaps, freaks of nature. So, if, and I think Karen will agree with me, if you want to go to your GP in this city, if you live in certain parts of this city, you will struggle for much, much longer than you will if you live in the leafy suburb or in a nice country area, which, by the way, to establish my credentials, I happen to live in. But on to education. So, yes, I chair building skills for the future, that's rebuilding every secondary and special school in the city, 300 million pound project. And as you drive around, if you see the skyline change, um, you'll know that's what it is. And of course, Josie's told you about the ICT element of that. But through that, I got a phone call one day um, from the Department of Education to ask me if I'd be willing for 12 months to be a governor of a school in special measures. Once you get on these government lists, you tend to be asked to do things. And I'd previously spent five years in Gartree Prison as a border visitor. Um, and that was a home office appointment. So I said, yes, I would do it for 12 months. And the school is called Fullhurst Community College on the Braunston Estate. Um, at the time consultants were in, it was in highly developed intellectual language, a complete and utter basket case. Kids didn't go. When parents, guardians, carers or whatever came, they normally came to want to beat up a, 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 a teacher. Painting a bit of an unfair picture, but it was a, in a dreadful state. It was very undersubscribed. There are all sorts of possibilities about it merging with other schools, etc., etc., etc. Had some of the lower, lowest attendance rates anywhere. We uh, battled for a year, and the consultants took their money and went. Sorry if there's any people here who are educational consultants. Took their money and went, and I turned up to a governor's meeting, and you've perhaps got it, I was the only one there. Uh, from that, I became chair of governors, and then started a journey that's been really quite remarkable. Um, we appointed uh, the youngest head in the country. Uh, we have had to ask staff who's with us and who's not with us, and nearly everybody has been with us. And we now find ourselves in a place where our attendance is at record levels. 
we are heavily oversubscribed for September next year. The challenges are the same as ever they were, but we've got enormous buy-in within the community. The buy-in's important because last September, we had 50 youngsters arrive at 11 years of age who couldn't read or write English. We had a number, and it would be unfair on the school really to go into too much detail, who had social habits that weren't exactly desirable. And we had an 18% pass rate five years ago at A star to C, five GCSEs. This year, that's at 50%. Six months ago, um, the minister, the Department of Education, he has to be nameless because, of course, TEDx is not a political organisation, but let's call him Michael Gove. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter who he is. Decided in a pursuit of the numbers game, of the league table game, that if you put children in for a GCSE more than once, then it counted against you. You got it knocked off your credits. So the headline would read, this school didn't get X percent, it got X minus Y percent. More importantly, it might well trigger an early Ofsted inspection. And in case I didn't mention it, Fullhurst Community College has gone from Ofsted in special measures to Ofsted good with outstanding features. The governors had to decide what they were going to do about this. And uh, very bravely to a person, they said, well, I'm sure Mr. Goes very kind to animals, but let's carry on as we are and we'll face the consequences. So at Fullhurst Community College, you might still take your maths or English exam two or three times. I tell you that because we have doubled the number of youngsters we get to the best sixth form college in this city. It's called Queen Elizabeth. Uh, I, was a, I was a governor there um, in the past. And we have stood by what we wanted to do because we say our children often need two and three goes. And you'll understand it when I say that I took my GCSEs twice. One of the letters that I've had the most pleasure in writing in recent years was to Michael Gove. And I asked him when he told us that we were going to be wrapped over the knuckles if we gave our youngsters two or three goes. I asked him how many cabinet members had passed their driving test the first time. I'm still waiting for an answer. I tell you the story because many of our young people need more than one go. They need twos and threes. And if we support them, we will get them there. But here's the reality check. At Fullhurst Community College, we have 40% of our youngsters below the poverty line. At Fullhurst College, we have nearly 50% on free school meals. The world is an uneven place. It's been really uplifting to hear the stories I've heard today, but please, please, don't let's forget our youngsters. Don't let's forget what's happening on our outer estates and probably on our inner estates. Let me tell you that our white working class English boys are underperforming the European boys and girls who came in only a year or so ago and couldn't speak a word of English. So passionately, if I may, don't let's forget them. So what can we all do? Well. Look, you are interested people by being here. Please take an interest in your schools. This city still can't find school governors. Please just don't go out of here and think, wasn't that all uplifting? I heard some great speakers, and then we had that old guy, Rick Moore, on. Please think, could I do something around my school, around my community? Because at Fullhurst, we're not just a school. We actually feed our kids. We, we love our kids. We clothe them, we go and get shoes from a store who don't need them anymore because our kids are coming to school in their brother's shoes with the toe cut out. And this is happening in this city where there are so many, many wonderful things going on. So please, let's have that little reality check and perhaps think of signing up to doing what you can do with this generation that I really think we can make something of if we work harder. Thank you very much.